Hello everyone, in this video I want to tell you how the root stability criterion works. When you are actually solving problems, you would like to know the position of the root and hence the stability of system without actually finding them. So how do you actually determine that a system is stable depending on the position? If you have the roots on the positive side of the S-plane, it means that the system is unstable. If you have a root on the on the axis, on the axis, on the imaginary axis, the system is said to be marginally stable. Well, this root shouldn't be there then. And if you have if you have all the roots on the left half of the S-plane, the system is said to be stable. So depending on this you can tell a system is stable marginally stable and unstable so you're not you for this thing you'll have to solve the equations you'll have to uh, find out what the roots are and then decide if the system is stable or not but how would it be if all that is not necessary and you can tell the stability of the system just by following a few simple steps so root stability criterion is exactly about that now here I have a transfer function t of s is equal to 5s square plus 2s plus 1 by 3s cube plus 4s square plus 2s plus 3. So for this transfer function the characteristic equation is the denominator. So this 3s cube plus 4s square plus 2s plus 3 is my characteristic equation. So solving that will give me the poles and hence will give me the stability of the system. So, what if I can find out the stability without actually having to solve it? So, this is what the root stability criterion does. Write down all the terms to the left. So, write down all the terms to the left, like the pars, s cube, s square, s per 1, s bar 0. And now write down 1 and leave this one and write the next one leave this one and write the next one however big it might be for the first two terms now I have s cube so I'm gonna write 3 I'm gonna leave 4 and I'm gonna write 2 and I'm gonna leave 3 and I'm gonna write the next one if there is something but there isn't anything so I'm gonna write 3 and 2 in the next thing for s square I'm gonna write 4 and I'm gonna write 3 so 4 and 3 now, I, this is it. This is these first two rows you're gonna take from the characteristic equation, but for the other terms, you're gonna derive them from these two rows. Now, how am I gonna get this value? It's really simple. All you need to do is multiply these two, 4 into 2, which is 8. So 8 minus 3 into 3 is 9 by 4, whatever number is, the, uh, is towards the most left. So you're going to multiply this with 2, which is 8, and then you're going to multiply 3 and 3, which is 9, and you're going to write 8 minus 9 by 4. Now, what is 8 minus 9? It's uh, minus 1 by 4, which is, uh, which is uh, minus 1 by 4 is minus 2.5. So, let me write down as minus, minus uh, 0 0.25. I'm sorry. So, that is 1. So, when there is nothing written, you can assume that there, it is actually 0. So, in the next row, when you're going to write something, this is 4. You're going to multiply this 4 with this 0. So, 4 into 0 is 0. And you're going to multiply 3 and 0, so which is 0 again. I'm just going to write 0 here. So, the next thing is multiplying this number and this number, which is 3 into minus 0.25, minus 0 into 4 by minus 0 0.25 uh, uh, let me just write down maybe it's not clear so you're gonna multiply this minus 0 0.25 into 
3 this is one term minus 4 into 0 which is 0 by again the leftmost thing minus 0 0.25 so you're gonna cut off minus 0 0.25 and this is gonna be 3 so now I need you to look at the first column which is 3 4 minus 0 0.25 and 3 so the only way of telling is how many times is the sign getting changed so if you look at 4 the next number is minus is minus 0 0.25 which means there has been a sign change from a positive to a negative so that is sign change 1 and there is another sign change between s power 1 and s power 0 because it has changed it from negative to a positive so there are two times of sign change so the root stability criterion explains that the number of sign changes is equal to the number of roots present in the right half of the s plane so what does that mean it means that there are two roots of this equation in the right half of the plane in the right half of the s plane which means you can call the system as unstable so this is the first case of root stability criterion and i'm gonna tell you two more cases what are you gonna do if the first element is a zero because you will be dividing the uh, content with the, the leftmost uh, element of a row, you cannot divide with zero. It, it can be determined. So there is a special case for zero uh, as the first element and a special case if the whole row is zero. So for these two cases, there are two more videos named part two and part three. And if you need to know those, just click on them. If this video has helped you, thank you. Hope you found it informative. And if you have an exam tomorrow, all the very best. Bye.